but I made one of them a monogamous full-time girlfriend. Okay, why did I do that? First of all, this one that I made a girlfriend is probably the closest, not probably, definitely, the closest to the ideal girl that I've been searching for or whatever. Okay, if I, if I were to say like, here's the ideal girl that I want, okay, and, and it's pretty, it's a pretty hefty list of check boxes, okay? What's up guys, it's John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle and I have a very special announcement for you guys today. I have decided to get into a relationship, okay? This is not something I normally do. Okay, you guys have heard me talk at length how I prefer typically to have what used to be about six to 12 rotation girls, okay, or girls in a harem, regular girls that I'm, I'm seeing. Um, but as of the recent past couple of years, it's more in the 12 to 17 range, all right? And Warsaw is running 17 regulars, which can be a fucking full nightmare, okay, if you can imagine. And here in Florianopolis, Brazil, I got up to around 14, 15, uh, scaled it, scaled it back to about 12 or 13. But I was doing some reflections recently, okay? And um, first of all, okay, there's, yes, yeah, so there's definitely a lot of pros, okay, there's a lot of benefits to having a big rotation, okay? You have a variety of body types, you have like your main, your main one typically, but you also have like kind of a secondary main girl, like usually you can have like multiple main girls, all right? So like two or three main girls, those are the girls that you develop connections and feelings with, okay, that you treat for all intents and purposes like a girlfriend, you do boyfriend, girlfriend type shit, you just don't have that monogamy component. And um, there's lots of benefits, okay, you get a whole variety of personalities, a whole variety of um, body types, okay, sometimes you want to hang out with the, the girl that likes to just sit inside and watch movies. Sometimes you're with the one that likes to go to nightclubs and dance. Sometimes the one that, you know, you're going to the beach and the one that likes adventures. And you have a girl that you have threesomes with or multiple girls you have threesomes with. And I actually ended up in a situation out here in Florianopolis with one of the girls, the girl from my, my videos um, that you guys may or may not have seen. We ended up having at least seven or eight different threesomes, seven or eight different girls, okay? And one foursome where we were kind of merging things. And then with... My other main girl that I had on the rotation, we were having some, we had like three on the side uh, separately from those. And then I was like merging them all together. I kind of had like a threesome rotation going, okay, where I had a bunch of girls that I could text at will that uh, combined for threesomes, okay. And this was also one of the best rotations that I had, okay, in terms of the looks and the, the internals of the girl, okay. Why did I decide to cut off all of the 12? Okay, I did that yesterday and I made one of them who's, I didn't count as the 12, because she's kind of new in the mix. Um, so there's technically 13, but I made one of them a monogamous full-time girlfriend. Okay, why did I do that? First of all, this one that I made a girlfriend is probably the closest, not probably, definitely, the closest to the ideal girl that I've been searching for or whatever. Okay, if I, if I were to say like, here's the ideal girl that I want, okay, and, and it's, pretty, it's a pretty hefty list of check boxes, okay? And I have the right to be picky, okay? The current count, which is now stopping, okay, for the time being, is 1,256, okay? Um, and that's just closes. I never tracked, I wish I had, I never tracked non-sex hookups. So things that were just blowjobs or hand jobs, okay, nightclub polls or dates where I hooked up with the girl. Let's say I pulled like a 10 or had a date with a 10, okay? and I got a blowjob. That is not reflected in the count. It's almost as if it didn't happen in terms of metric tracking, okay? I just never tracked that. I started to in, in college, okay? I was tracking even makeouts, like how many makeouts, how many non-sex hookups, how many sex hookups, and then um, a girlfriend that I had at that time found the sheet, okay, and she saw that she was blonde Melissa and there was like another Melissa. And she's like, what does the asterisk mean? I'm like, that means we had sex. That's a nice mug, by the way. Um, but, okay, like, so you guys might be thinking, like, a lot of you would, like, kill to have a fucking regular set. Like, basically, there were six or seven different ones that were on call to have over, okay, for threesomes. And seven of them were saying, I love you, 
Okay, in Portuguese, Cheyamo. So all day long I'm getting Cheyamo texts, and all day long I'm fucking getting Kom Sodajis, which means I miss you. And basically, like, like okay, so so part of why I decided this because this girl, this this girl that I made the girlfriend checks like pretty much every box. Okay, I'll, I'll just go through quickly. For those of you that don't know, I have a lot of huge intellectual interests. Okay, deep down I'm a closet nerd. I was literally the most unpopular guy out of 700 people in my whole high school. No joke. Okay, I was senior year. I was taking seven advanced placement classes. I was in uh, math competitions, math league competitions. This isn't a racist comment, but typically those were dominated by Asian guys, and I would beat them. Okay, I got super good at StarCraft, which is a real-time strategy game. Um, again, not a racist comment, but the top players in the world were, were the Koreans, and I was beating them. Okay, I wasn't the best, best player in the world, but I was very highly ranked. Okay? And then with poker, that was a way to exercise my intellect in order to win money. Okay? I, I made a lot of the, the money that I used to pay for college, and I got a bunch of scholarship for college as well. But I was working a retail job and just reading cognitive science and neuroscience books. And then on the side, it was like a retail job with not many responsibilities. I was reading a lot of cognitive science and neuroscience books and poker books. And I would take those earnings and I would go play in like underground poker cir- tournaments, poker circuits, okay, like games that are outside of casinos, and win money there. And then I would leverage that money in day trade stocks. Okay, I was doing quantitative technical analysis and day trading stocks. And this was in high school. I sat with two guys at lunch. Okay, we would we would talk about these are two of the smartest guys that to this day I still have ever met. Uh, we would talk about science and philosophy and very nerdy topics at length. Okay, there's no girls at the table. I didn't kiss girls in college. That's all, this is all true. But I was like, like it, it's it's interesting to me. And, and the reason why I'm so down to earth and passionate with my clients is because I was much worse off than most of you guys. Okay, most of the guys that I talked to, not only can I relate to it because I lived all, all through that, but also to like an extreme way. I had social anxiety disorder. I I still do. Okay, that's why I was drinking so much. I've overcome it to a large degree by this point, okay? But I was diagnosed with social anxiety disorder, with general anxiety disorder, with panic disorder, okay? And I was getting panic attacks through my teenage years in early 20s, mostly my teenage years, to such a large extent that I was afraid to leave the house, okay? Because I didn't want to have a panic attack and be like away from like my comfortable safe area, okay? I was afraid to take long car rides. I was afraid to go to sports. Thing. I was playing soccer and baseball and basketball and stuff. I was afraid to be on the sports field Oh, you know, just a way, just having like a panic attack in public, okay? I was worried about having panic attacks in, in class, okay? When people would talk to me, I would usually turn bright red, okay? Point being, I, I was, I, I grew up as just a very, 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 very shy, very nerdy guy, okay? But those interests didn't just disappear and my intellect didn't just disappear once I got good with girls, okay? The very reason why I rose to the top of this game and why I firmly believe that I'm the best guy in this game by far and the best teacher of this stuff by far, and that's backed up by the results of my clients, is because of my extremely hyper-analytical nature, okay, coupled with, for better or worse, extreme childhood verbal abuse, okay, from my mother, um, <clears throat> which is still a point of contention with her to this day, but that's what gave me the biggest drive component to master the game, okay, and that is, that is the, for the very reason why I mastered this game, it's the same why I mastered poker quickly and why I mastered chess quickly, and why I worked for five years on optimizing the defense systems for the defense of the U.S. government, okay, for Lockheed Martin. My job was ballistic missile defense. There's a nuclear, biological, or chemical missile attack on the United States to our allies. How do we um, optimally defend against it, both the, the speed of response time and the accuracy response, okay? And that, so I was applying my analytical superpowers, whatever you want to call it, to, and I have... You know, this this isn't a bragging video or anything like this. I'm just showing you guys where I came from. I'm going to tie this into this girl in a second, okay? Because basically I met like a female version of me, okay? That's also hot. It's very, 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 very rare to find a girl that has all these interests that I'm about to read in a second that's also hot, okay? Uh, I never met any girls that are into all this stuff. Only fractions of the stuff. And typically there's two main problems with girls that are into even a fraction of these topics that I'm about to list. Either they're very socially awkward or they're not physically attractive, okay? And I don't want to be getting very close, call it shallow or whatever, but I don't want to be getting very close with a girl that I'm not physically attracted to. 
And I also don't want to be around a girl that's like extremely socially awkward. Okay, you can't bring around your friends, etc. Um, but you know that the, the reason why I mastered this game is is that hyper analytical, okay, kind of just extreme genetic intelligence, okay, which is what I was going to mention is I've taken IQ test before and I've scored in the 160s, and that is around the level of Einstein. I'm saying I'm as smart as Einstein. They found after the fact that there was these glial cells in his brain. Of course, there was an empirical explanation for why he had this profound intelligence and creativity. But I just got a good genetic luck of the draw. Okay, in the book The Blank Slate by Steven Pinker, cognitive psychologist from Harvard, he argues very successfully with empirical evidence that intelligence is mostly determined at birth. Okay, contrary to the philosopher John Locke, point of view who said that we all have a blank slate to the, the famous concept of the tabula rosa okay so here are the list of topics that she and there's many many more but these are some of the main ones that I'm interested in that she's also not only very interested in but is very knowledgeable about okay philosophy one of my bachelor's degrees computer science my other bachelor's degree artificial intelligence robotics nanotechnology molecular biology the technological singularity which is the double exponential increase of advancing, accelerating um, information technologies, okay, where it's going to be strong artificial intelligence surpassing humans. Okay, that's, that's coming in the very near future. Probably one of my biggest interests. Psychology, cognitive science, neuroscience, and then, of course, related fields like computational cognitive neuroscience. Uh, transhumanism, which involves um, becoming cyborgs, Okay, which sounds like science fiction. It's not. It's already happening. People are already using implants and different things. Okay, um, and we're going to be coming increasingly non-biological in the very near future. Okay, um, anti-aging, extreme anti-aging. Okay, I have right here. Her and I were reading this together last night, which is a, a fucking first. Okay, twelve thousand or one thousand two hundred fifty-six girls, and this is the first time I've sat down with a girl. And we're fucking reading, I read this whole thing on its own, but, but we're reading the summary of David Sinclair, the anti-aging scientist from Harvard, the why we age and why we don't have to. Okay, and we're going over the usage of trans transverse veritrol in NMN to stimulate NAD+, and metformin to suppress the sugar response, et cetera. Um, all, th all the other topics are uh, health optimization, okay, biohacking. Cryogenics. Okay, there's a company in the United States called Elcor. They'll freeze your entire brain for 80 grand, or your entire body for 200 grand. Um, I, my personal view is that you're going to need to from, to freeze the whole body because there's a lot of connections tied throughout to the body. It's very integral with how your brain functions. And there's something called vitrification. Okay, they've successfully in the very recent past um, restored animal tissues animal organs from a frozen state, okay, and brought them back without damage, okay, so um, that is a, a very big thing of interest, but we also are even more concerned, because there's the whole being hit by a bus scenario, her and I are both very, very interested in mind uploading, okay, but you don't want a digital approximation of yourself, okay, the, a quick thought experiment on that point is if you were to freeze time, hypothetically, but you have a copy of yourself anatomically, let's say you go into a room Okay, copy yourself anatomically, destroy the original. Okay, the thing that comes out is going to, for all intents and purposes, appear to be you to everyone else. Okay, but your consciousness is not being transferred. So there's a, there's a hard problem there. Obviously, you want your own consciousness to continue. You don't want just a digital approximation of yourself. You could care less about that, or most people would. Uh, what else? Cognitive psychology, evolutionary biology. Okay, I've read a bunch of Richard Dawkins, such as The Blind Watchmaker. He's going against Paley's watch argument, where if you found a complex watch, you assume there must be a creator, but, but Dawkins goes through and explains, you know, how evolution over millions of years add, added these little tiny improvements and gave rise to what we, what we have today as humans. Um, genetics, uh, just consciousness in general, and stuff like nihilism, right? Like... Her and I are both self-identified nihilists, meaning neither of us believe in God, neither of us believe in an afterlife. We both think that after death will be the same as before birth, okay, just simply a state of non-existence. Turning into a very philosophical video here. Um, point being, I, I name-dropped all kinds of like 
the, the deepest, I shouldn't say darkest, but, but just all kinds of, you know, really important research that I've done over the years or things that I've, I've learned because prior to game and pickup, I spent all my time on philosophy, on science, on psychology and cognitive science, okay? And I, and I got super, super, super interested in cognitive science and neuroscience. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with my educational background, I have a double major in computer science and philosophy with a minor in cognitive science. Okay, I finished that a year early, um, four years instead of five, because it was a double major and a minor. I did a master's degree in human computer interaction, which is basically cognitive psychology applied to software and systems. I did that in one year, I was supposed to take two. And then I did a master's in uh, philosophy of cognitive science, okay, which is, again, that was supposed to take two years in England. It, I, I did it in one. So I had two masters and two bachelors by age 23. Then I took the LSAT and I was going to go to law school and have my JD by 26. So JD, double masters, double bachelors by 26. And then I was going to do a PhD in philosophy of mind. And I was going to be studying consciousness and become a philosophy of mind professor. And <clears throat> uh, that ended up not taking shape just because ultimately philosophy and, and some of these scientific pursuits are not conducive to capitalism. Um, and, and I didn't really have much interest in being a professor just because most of the students would have a naive understanding of the subject matter, possibly to the point of annoyance. And uh, I didn't really care that much, just being honest and practical about just 30 random people, okay, educating them. I'd rather advance my own knowledge of this stuff. And you know, the other option is to be like a, a researcher in the field, which also wasn't too appealing to me because I didn't want to just study some niche of cognitive science and, you know, advance some tiny niche just a little bit. I want to review the findings of all the top people and then see what does that mean for things. That's why I was interested in the philosophy of cognitive science, that second master's that I did in England. Okay, I was at a prestigious school um, called University of Sussex in Brighton, England. Um, point being, okay, so, so this girl, um, she took an IQ test, okay, and we, we've talked at length, and she got a 210, which is like off the charts genius level. Like up above the ones, I got in the 160s. It's, it's supposed to be like you're a genius or whatever, above 160. Einstein, I think, was around 160. And she scored 210, okay? And she just finished her PhD. She's 28, she just finished her PhD at the beginning of this year. Um, and I don't know, there's, she, like, it's just insane, like how many, like all these niche, these, these are kind of like really niche interests. But we're talking about how neither one of us believe in free will and for very good reason. Neither one of us believe in ethics, absolute ethics, an absolute basis for ethics. We think it's invented by man, et cetera. So she just kind of hits all the, all the major views that I hold that I think are extremely correct. Just like in the game, how I've taken every principle to the optimization extreme, okay? And, I, and any of my, any of my, uh, strategies in game are always subject to change. Let me go over very quickly and I'll, and I'll continue more about her in a moment. <clears throat> Any of my, okay, I learned this in philosophy. Your, your positions are only as good as the arguments behind them, okay? So what that means is in order to be, you know, a successful thinker and a, and a fair thinker, I don't just hold on to positions because they're my own, okay? If someone can disprove my argument, or someone can show me something that makes more sense, I'm willing to change my position. And that's what happened in the early days when I was going through a lot of these things. I'd find out about a topic, I'd talk to all the top experts, read all the top literature, really like crunch it hard in my head, okay? And then once I had it all sorted out and I had my best position on the topic, I would write out a whole thing explaining my entire position. And then what I would do is I would circulate it to the smartest people I knew, okay? My smartest friends, my smartest professors, etc., with the sincere hope that they'd be able to poke holes in it with a sincere hope that they'd be able to counter argue against any piece. Why? Because that makes it stronger. And that iterative evolutionary development is what makes it stronger. Okay? And then you end up you end up with something that's extremely rock solid. And that is the power of solid thinking and solid analysis. And that is why my pickup system is so strong. Okay? Contrast to someone, and I'm not bashing on him, he's still the person I respect the most in the industry but he's not gonna come on my channel because he says that I like disrespect him because I say that his, that his system is dated, but it is, Mystery, okay? Mystery, who wrote the Mystery Method, 
Okay, I, I broke my first 100 girls just with mystery method alone, and I think it's beautifully written, but there are a lot of flaws, okay, and there are a lot of things that are suboptim, op, suboptimal, okay? It's still light years ahead of RST and the other systems that are just steaming piles of dog shit, okay, which is 99% of the systems in this community. But he made a system, and then that's it, okay? And he failed to evolve, he failed to adapt, and I can rationally and empirically show him why the changes I have made are for the better. And they're reflected in my own results. You see an exponential graph, okay, with my, with my lay count results. Okay, it took me 10 years to do my first 100, and then started becoming 100 a year. And then it got up to the, the height of it being 215 a year. And I think knowing what I know now, if I really, really went balls to the wall, I honestly think I could do over 1,000 in a year. I know that's a big claim. There's 365 days in a year, okay? To get three closes a day, I would need a team of outsourced people, okay, just sourcing leads and running my tech scripts and implementing a sexual screen, okay? And then the only, the only girls that would be coming to the house are girls that are already screened uh, to be DTF, to be down to fuck, and are the girls that are green to come straight to the house rather than meeting in public, okay? And then it's as simple as setting three appointments a day, and you, and you close them all because they're already screened for DTF, and if you bang three new girls a day for 365 days, so that's a thousand girls in New York, okay? That would monopolize all my time, which brings me to another point for why I got this girlfriend. My life was, was basically fully consumed by these girls, okay? I have fitness goals. I was sacrificing the gym a whole bunch of times, okay? I have business goals for scaling up my pickup business. I have a lot of it in place, and it's already beginning, and uh, to be perfectly honest, I was seeing two to five girls a day, okay, including throwing in new ones here and there, but out of that rotation, when you're running a 12, 13 girl rotation, I'm seeing two to five new girls a day, or not new girls, two to five girls a day, okay? And, what, and they're usually back to back, to back to back, okay? Like for instance, yesterday, which is the first day of the new relationship, I had four girls scheduled, okay? I had an 18 year old that was supposed to come over at 11 a.m., and then around two, I was supposed to go to lunch with a girl that, a, basically like a Barbie blonde, okay, with fake tits, fake ass, fake lips, nose job, etc. And then I was supposed to have this 20-year-old over who's like this petite girl with like hardly any body fat, weighs like 42 kilograms. And then there was supposed to be a stacked curvy girl that was coming over after her and that was going to sleep over. But when you set all this up, like it's, yeah, it's cool. There's, you get the, the variety of personalities and variety of body types, but you're trading away all your time. Okay, and then you have no more time for anything else. I have these really big business goals this year and these really big fitness goals this year. All right? I'm trying to put on another 15 pounds, okay, another 7 kilograms or so. And I, it's just not possible with all these girls. Okay? So this was kind of perfect timing. I, I really wanted to nail these goals okay, and have more time for other stuff to have a more balanced life because the rotation that I, I built up and glamorized, okay, and I always brag about, oh, yeah, I have you know, 12 girls or 15 girls at once. Yeah, it's cool, and they're hot, they're hot, cool chicks, but they don't even slightly compare to this other girl, okay? And after I hung out with this other girl a few times, she's relatively new, only the past couple weeks, I just was so, 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 so bored with the rest of them, okay? And like I said, this, this new girlfriend one is also hot, and she's also cool, and she's also sweet, and she, there's no drama, and it, like I said, a long list of checkboxes, okay, but to have that intellectual fulfillment for me, I, that was really, really, really important in the beginning. And I, as I found, especially in America, okay, because intelligence and intellectual pursuits carry negative social repercussions and negative social value, for, which is retarded, but that's how it is, I just started putting that piece aside and thinking, okay, well, you know, this chick's, you know, it's hard to find a hot chick that I can be intellectually filled with, and I still think that's a very big problem in America. Um, it's not that they don't exist, but it's very, very tough. Okay, and it, in my phone, I have about twelve thousand four hundred contacts, and it took a lot of fucking people to go through. I don't know how long things will go with this girl. It looks like it has a ton of potential, and we're just going to take it day by day, week by week. But it's it's like it's amazing. It's like a new level of fulfillment for me because. Like, after sex, we're not just fucking putting on, like, mindless bullshit or, or she's not just talking about, like, baseless garbage. 
we can talk about like stuff that's incredibly amazing. And when we have all these projects we're starting together where we're going to optimize each piece of, of health optimization for ourselves, optimize each piece for anti-aging, okay, for skincare, for all these different things. We're both like super into flowcharts and analyzing all this stuff. And she thinks that I know more about this stuff than her. Okay, I'm 36, she's 28. But, you know, she's no slouch, okay? She potentially is even smarter than me. Okay, it's remain, it remains to be seen. I want to take the same IQ test, like a very reputable one, so we have kind of a control against each other. Not that that's the be all end all, but the, the thing is, we're, she's like the closest thing to like um, a full package partner that I've, that I've ever found, okay? And that's why I'm announcing on my channel. Like I was, I was debating like, hmm, should I even, you know, tell my audience about this? But yes, <clears throat> I'm going to show you that even at this level, even with 12, girls that are, that are, you know, really cool, hot, cool internally, etc. Um, it is still possible, you know, and, and this girl's like, oh, you don't need to, you don't need to like commit to me right away or like, you don't, you can like try to process stuff first. And, you, and I, you know what I said? I said, I've done the calculations. I know that you blow these girls out of the water in every possible way. And when I am spending time with a woman, I'd rather have it be you than them. I know that for sure. I also know that they, these other girls monopolize all my time. And they don't allow me to accomplish goals and other things. And plus, with 12 girls brings 12 sets of drama and headaches. Okay, And some of them in particular, some of my favorite ones, were just causing endless amounts of drama. Okay, So I'm always being left stressed and in a bad mood and all this stuff. And this new girl, the, the girlfriend, she said, she said, oh, I, I used to date around a lot. And she said, it's a lot of maintenance and a lot, a lot of upkeep. Okay, And it, you have to trade away like all your time for it. Okay, so this is kind of like the, the perils of a, of a giant rotation. Um, and also, she said, like, she's getting back just a very minimal return, which is mostly just physical. And she said that most dates she goes on, she said she gives a guy like an hour, and she goes through some of the interesting topics that she likes, and almost none of the guys have any interest or clue what the fuck she's talking about in, in these different things. And she cuts, she doesn't see them anymore. She's like, I refuse to spend time with people that are not on my level. She's like, I, she, she said this to me. She said, I see myself as the full package and I have very high standards for who I want to spend my time with and I'm not willing to settle for anything less. And she's very good with discipline and stuff like that. And I want to learn from that and I want to hold that principle as well. Okay. It, on one hand, it is good that I <laughs> devoted my past 10 to 15 years being either with a rotation girl or on a date or doing night game at a club or doing texting. I basically immersed myself hardcore with everything game related in all my free time and that gave me the most data and most experience possible so that I could develop my systems and heuristics as briefly as possible okay so I'll leave you with that I don't want to make this go on forever but the count is stopping right now at 1256 um, I cut off all those girls there's a whole bunch of crying and, and sadness etc <laughs> on this beautiful tropical island out here um, and I do encourage whoever made it this far if you are interested Okay, and utilizing the massive analysis and optimization that I did okay, with my genetic intelligence to this game that is dating and women. Click the link below, book a free 30-minute strategy call. Me or a coach on my team will break down exactly, you know, based on your goals and your current results and your current self-identified weak spots, we will tell you exactly what you need to do and how we can help you. Okay, it's a free 30-minute call. There's no obligation. I highly encourage you guys to click that link. It's in the description. Go there and do it right now. It'll bring you a calendar page. You sign up for a time. And we'll tell you exactly where you're at. Because I've seen and done it all at this point. Okay, I'm, a, I'm an encyclopedia on the game. I would consider myself the greatest expert in the world by far about this game. Okay, just because I'm able to master skill games quickly. I had this game mastered 10 years ago. Okay, but I've, I've fine-tuned it and optimized it to the point now where I can get a new client that comes in with hardly any results and turn them into a superstar within a matter of a few days or a matter of a week or two max, okay? And then he's able to crush and, and get a, a full package girlfriend of his own, okay? So if you're interested in taking it to the next level, get on the phone with us 30 minutes, see what we can do for you. Um, I'm not gonna fucking uh, bring this girl on camera. She wouldn't want to anyways. Uh, you know, this isn't, I have nothing to prove. I'm not gonna be posting pictures of her, sending pictures of her around to my friends that could get posted up or whatever like that. Um, it's a, 
you know, that's my own private life, okay? And yeah, she is very beautiful. Yeah, she is amazing. Yeah, she's pretty much everything, okay? Doesn't mean I'm, neither one of us believes in, you know, we're not, neither one of us wants marriage as a, as a long-term goal with anyone because we, for various reasons we think it's stupid, nor do we want kids, et cetera, et cetera. And <clears throat> no, this is not my retirement from the game or anything like that. It's just for the time being, I'm exploring this with her and expect the company to now, now that my time has opened up, now it's fucking, now it's on. Okay, all, everything I did for the game is now going to be turned towards my business efforts, okay, and expect in three to six months for me to be very sizable in terms of my physical presence, okay. I'm shooting for putting on nine kilograms. Okay, I'm, I'm 91 right now. I'm going for 100. Okay, and I'm at six foot four, 193 centimeters. I'm going to be <clears throat> big, okay. I have a personal trainer. I'm going to continue to do Muay Thai. Um, it is now time to balance out these other areas of my life. My two biggest vices were alcohol and women. Okay, I got rid of alcohol in September. I'm not, I'm not again, I'm not retiring from the game. I'm still going to be doing everything the same. Okay, I'm just not running a big rotation right now. Okay, and, and I'm freeing up a lot of my time okay, for very good reason because a full package girl came along and I now have time to accomplish my goals. So thank you very much for watching. Book that free call below. Um, and I will speak with you on that call. Make sure you subscribe if you have not already. And thank you. I always like to be transparent and real with my audience. Okay, for those of you that want to say, oh, you're being soft or a faggot or, or whatever, like um, for, for locking down with one chick and all this stuff. Listen, I was able to have, there were, like I said, six or seven chicks on call to have three, three some different threesomes. Okay. Um, a lot of these girls on the rotation were above a nine. Okay, looks wise. A lot of them were cool as well, but they, they still don't hold the candles to this other girl. Okay, and there's there's other priorities now. Um, so this is my decision. And that's why when she's like, I can give you time to think about it, I said no. I I know what I'm looking for in a woman. You match all of it. And I know what I need to do. So I'm going to be a man and, and fucking pull the trigger and do it. And I did do it. And I'm already, we're both already really fucking happy, and it's just going to continue so to, to grow and get better. So that's it. Thank you guys. Uh, lots of cool shit to come. Book that call if you're interested and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.